Animation undoubtedly has been the biggest contributor in the overall interest in the DC universe outside the source material. Despite their shortcomings in the live action side of things, Warner Brothers and DC were in their bag when crafting some animated shows and movies. Some of the best adaptations for anything DC related stem from animation. The DCAU is arguably the most beloved DC comic adapted universe in the history of anything. From the late 90s to probably around 2013, I like to call this the golden age of DC animation as some of their best projects came out during this time frame. You got the classic DCAU projects like Batman the Animated Series, the Justice League cartoons, then later on outside the DCAU like Teen Titans, Young Justice, Green Lantern the Animated Series, and the list just goes on and on. That's not even including the widespread digital release of animated movies that were made back to back with consistent quality. My favorite movie for each Trinity member, regardless if it's animated or live action, they're all animated movies, with Wonder Woman 2009 being my favorite Wonder Woman film. Superman vs. The Elite might be my personal favorite solo Superman movie. Batman has way too many bangers to choose from that stem from animation, but I feel as though lately DC animation just isn't what it used to be and sort of lost that spark which made it so special. Most of the issues stem from a decrease in budget when crafting these animated projects so the art slash animation styles all sort of look the same and the animation just isn't as crisp. On top of the fact that ever since the DCAMU started in 2013, there's been a lot less standalone films that served as a unique comic adaptation of popular stories. One of the few things I enjoyed about DC animation in the early 2010s were these very short animated films or features that would center on certain characters or aspects of the DC universe. I remember Cartoon Network had a program called DC Nation that was a multitude of DC comic shorts on Saturday mornings. These few minutes shorts would center on a plethora of characters like the Doom Patrol, random adventures with Batman, like that Batman of Shanghai showcase where it was sort of anime inspired. <laughs> Cinema. <laughs> the new Teen Titans, which was a more comedic take on the OG Teen Titans cartoon, which led to the formation of Teen Titans Go, shorts with Black Lightning, Green Arrow, and many others. I think they would air during commercial breaks or something during an episode of a DC show on Cartoon Network. These were the best examples of the variety and tone and visual aesthetic with these projects vastly being different in their art style and approach. There's also this anthology series of short animated features that were 10 to 15 minutes in length called the DC Showcase Stories. They told short stories but had the feel and visual sense of a typical animated feature film like the Superman slash Shazam short where they fought Black Adam. There's one on the Spectre, one on Green Arrow, Fighting Count Vertigo. I remember them being released on YouTube and watching them years back, especially that Catwoman DC showcase. For whatever reason, when I was a kid, I would always find myself re-watching that Catwoman showcase in particular over and over again. There's just something about the story and pacing that was really well done by the creative team. It must have really resonated with me on an emotional level. There's absolutely no other reason as to why I had this on loop as a kid. No other reason at all. It had such great character writing and um... It had, a, it had a great implementation of the Catwoman lore from the comics and the fight scenes were really cool and the, um, the, the freaking, um, uh, Motherfucking, uh, uh, damn, damn, uh, what made DC Animation so special back in the day was its sense of style, more specifically with the wide range of storytelling that was conveyed through these projects. Contrary to how almost every DC animated movie nowadays looks the same since they've had such a big push for a more interconnected universe, most films pre-Justice League Flashpoint Paradox would have a distinct art style that would more often than not match the art of the comic story they were adapting. Batman Year One is a perfect animated adaptation of the story written by Frank Miller and drawn by David Muscicelli when it comes to its visual aesthetic. They didn't go out of their way to add in unnecessary changes changes or additions that weren't present in the graphic novel to pad out the runtime. They just told the core story, which is indicative with its only one hour and four minute runtime. Superman Batman Public Enemies adapted the Superman Batman comic title written by Jeff Loeb and drawn by Ed McGuinness, and that animated movie is more in line with the art style of that comic as seen through the character designs. This is also seen with Superman Batman Apocalypse mirroring Michael Turner's art of the Supergirl from Krypton story which saw the introduction of Kara Zor-El. Justice League The New Frontier really does an effective job in capturing the visual style of Darwin Cook's art from the New Frontier limited comics series. Even if the visuals aren't one-to-one, -one, they still have designs that are representative of the books they're adapting and incorporate a specific animation style that benefits the story they're trying to tell. The Dark Knight Returns, Two-Parter, Batman Under the Red Hood, All-Star Superman, Superman vs. the Elite, just releasing a banger after a banger after a banger. And being more comic accurate to the T isn't the end-all be-all for if a movie is good or not. Some things being cut or added in can be fine as long as it better fits the context of the story you're trying to tell, like Under the Red Hood cutting out some of the extra fluff from the Under the Hood comic and being more self-contained. 
bad example of this, however, is Batman Hush changing the entire identity of the Hush character from Thomas Elliot to the freaking Riddler just to surprise the audience. But I refuse to let that be the end of me. No, 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 I found another way. A Lazarus pit. Moment I saw everything, knew everything, frustrating Riddle. Who is the Batman? Right in front of me the whole time. I needed a new persona. My true identity had to be kept hush hush. That shit stank down it. Ugh. Many elements from the comic are missing due to it being tied to the DCMU instead of it being its own thing. Like how there's no mention or inclusion of Tim Drake Robin, no Jason Todd mention, no inclusion of Huntress, Batman doesn't fight Rachel Ghoul because he died in Son of Batman. There's not a lot of emphasis on the previous friendship between Bruce Wayne and Thomas Elliot. The ending of the movie is just a bit odd to me, having Catwoman leave Batman at the end because he refused to kill the Riddler or Hush in this case. <laughs> He didn't have to die. You're crazy. Killed your friend. Tried to murder Nightwing, and you're sorry he's dead? If someone can be saved, I have to try. You and your goddamn code. I can't believe I let myself get caught up in this again. I changed. I would have changed more, a lot more, for you. But you won't. Goodbye, Bruce. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? An even worse case is the Killing Joke animated movie where in order to stretch out the runtime, they added in some weird subplot about some crook named Paris France and focused on the god-awful, I mean just dreadful Batgirl and Batman relationship. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. But I've considered it. The idea of having to change key elements from a comic you're adapting in order to surprise readers of said book is so mind-boggling to me. When comic fans hear their favorite stories being adapted in an animated format, they expect the best elements of that story to be adapted in a meaningful way in order to give justice to the story being told. Most of them aren't just like, hmm, I really hope they make a significant change to the story I really like just so I can be surprised. Not to mention more likely than not, most people watching these animated movies probably haven't even read the comic nor do they read comics regularly. They may be fans of these characters, but most of the people tuning in wouldn't go out of their way to read the actual stories themselves, so there's no need to implement a shock value to it. Anytime I bring up the topic of DC animated adaptations of specific stories, I always bring up the medium of anime and manga. Shonen anime are direct adaptations of their manga counterpart, down to the art style, story, and everything. And the only time they differ from their source material is via like filler episodes, but when they are delving into the meat and potatoes of a story arc, any changes made are very subtle. You don't see manga fans talking about some, man, I really hope Obito Uchiha is the man behind the mask so I can get surprised when I watch the anime. The problem of focusing on an interconnected DC animated movie universe like the Tomorrowverse or the DCAMU is how they all just feel the same one way or another. If there are certain things you don't like about the art style or how stories are conveyed, chances are those issues are going to be present throughout the entire universe. For the animated Batman Long Halloween 2 parter, the intent was to have an art style that was more indicative of Tim Sale's art from the Long Halloween graphic novel, but since this takes place in the Tomorrowverse, they had to go with an art style that would be used in every other film in that universe. So my, my first thing was I was going to do Tim Sale's style. I was just trying to figure out at the time, how can I make that work in animation? So I had about a few months to work, figure it out. But while I was working on other stuff, things changed during that period. And uh, James Tucker was leaving as a producer for the DC animated movies, which he was, you know, pretty much running most of them. And Bruce Tim was doing uh, his Elseworld stuff. So they told me, well, if you're going to, do long Halloween. We need a style that's going to carry through through a, a series of films. So that's unfortunately I had to not. I could. I didn't get a chance to do the Tim Sale look. Now, they didn't stop making Elseworlds movies when the DCAMU first started. You still had standalone movies released simultaneously, but there was more emphasis on the main universe as a whole. More than half of the DC animated movies that had been released since 2020 have been the Tomorrowverse films rather than standalone projects, each with their own visual flair. In the past, there had been a couple of DC animated movies connected to each other or to another universe in subtle ways. Examples of this include how Superman, Batman, Public Enemies and Superman, Batman, Apocalypse take place in the same universe, yet they have different art styles. Justice League Crisis on Two Earths was 
was intended to be a part of the DCAU continuity taking place after the first Justice League cartoon before they removed references to the DCAU and let it be its own thing. Justice League Doom also served as a standalone sequel to Crisis on Two Earths. Another good example of variety is Batman Gotham Knight, which was this anthology film that released in 2008 where it was divided into six segments with each segment being animated by a different animation studio. One had more of a traditional anime look to it, one had more of a simplistic aesthetic to it, the other more gothic, and so on and so forth. I honestly think that not enough people talk about it, and in my opinion, it's one of the more underrated DC animated movies. The reason why these films are so highly regarded amongst the fandom is how they adapt these characters in their stories, along with delivering some of the best moments in DC history. Batman Under the Red Hood introduced many fans to the character of Jason Todd, and delivered one of the best Batman moments on his psyche and why he doesn't kill. What, your moral code just won't allow for that? It'd be too damned easy. All I've ever wanted to do is kill him. But if I do that, if I allow myself to go down into that place, I'll never come back. I'm not talking about killing Penguin or Scarecrow or Dent. Just him, because he took me away from you. Oh my god! <laughs> Some of these animated movies alone contain way too many Batman as him moments. Uh, I'll kill her! I swear to God! I... No, you won't. There is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss, but when it looked back at us, you blinked. think one of us would go over to the other side? Or succumb to mind control. That's why I developed plans for containing any or all members of the JLA. None of us would ever do that to you. Then you're damn fools. Man? My actions don't require any defense. In the same situation, I'd do it again. Oh, come on! If you people can't see the potential danger of an out-of-control Justice League, I don't need to wait for a vote. I don't belong here. I will show you who rules Gotham City! Okay, son. Show me. You don't get it, son. This isn't a mud hole. It's an operating table. And I'm the surgeon. In all the years to come in your most private moments, I want you to remember the one man who beat you. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! It will never cease to amaze me how them folk at Warner Brothers single-handedly fumbled the DCEU when they had a plethora of animated adaptations to pick and choose from since they're too lazy to pick up a comic. With several adaptations already being a part of an interconnected DC universe with established characters and lore like the DCAU or Young Justice, the blueprint was right there. You had one job. Just the one. The general audience needs to be more exposed to media that is representative of the dynamics of these characters and what they actually stand for. The Superman Batman animated movies I mentioned previously have some of the best Batman and Superman interactions put to screen. Kryptonite's near your heart. I don't know if I'll be fast enough to get it before the wound closes. Where's the flash when you need him? Do me a favor and lose the sense of humor. Do us both a favor and buy one. She died. No. Why is it the good villains never die? Mark. What the hell are good villains? You didn't need to use the wire. I could have carried you. Between you and me? I hate that. That was my best friend. And you just killed him. We're surrounded. I can hear them coming. I suppose it's useless to tell you to leave. I wouldn't miss this for anything. Your funeral. I already had one. <laughs> Your cousin just torched $50,000 worth of custom hardware. Send me the bill. On a reporter's salary. Right. One of the little things I like about some of these Justice League animated movies or solo projects is showing more the physicality of, say, Wonder Woman, for example, and properly demonstrating her competency as a hand-to-hand -hand combatant who should never be trifled with.
Submit. In recent years, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of animated shows released in comparison to the cartoons that aired years ago. I guarantee at least one or more of those shows back in the day solidified your stance as a fan of DC and these characters at any point. Whether it's Young Justice, the 2004 Batman cartoon, That Egg Shot, Batman Beyond, Batman the Animated Series, The Brave of the Bold, and all those other bangers. So many of these shows were instant classics with how they resonated with audiences alike. Their presence single-handedly shaped the way DC adaptations were made going forward and popularized certain elements that made their way into mainstream comics themselves, like Batman Beyond, the character of Harley Quinn, modern Mr. Freeze. In the last handful of years or so, some of the only notable animated series are like the Harley Quinn show, I guess, which had a decent first couple of seasons, but the latest season was just not good at all. My Adventures of Superman was solid enough. Young Justice season three and four are fine, but they're definitely not as good as the previous seasons one and two, which aired on Cartoon Network. There were definitely more budget cuts with the animation as it didn't look as smooth. As for the more recent DC animated films, whether it would be the DC AMU or the Tomorrowverse, they're just not as saucy. This is especially prevalent in the Tomorrowverse films as about half of them are just mediocre at best. It's also being cut short with the Crisis on Infinite Earths trilogy, which is set to end this universe. And my god, what a waste this universe was. I feel like it didn't serve any purpose with its stories and there was definitely a lack of proper buildup to Crisis in this universe. No proper Justice League team up film because War World was just a Trinity movie. The heroes with movies only got one each minus I guess the Batman Long Halloween two-parter. Green Lantern be where my power was mid and butcher the characters of Hal Jordan and Sinestro. The DC AMU in the lead up to Apocalypse War at least had character arcs for characters like Damian Wayne Robin in a few Justice League movies here and there, but both universes suffer from lack of proper emphasis on the wider DC universe. It's weird to see how the DC AMU ended with another flashpoint at the end of Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, which brought forth the Tomorrowverse, just for the Tomorrowverse to end only four years after it started with a crisis event film. It's going to be interesting to see what the future of DC animation will bring with the end of the Tomorrowverse and hopefully a bigger emphasis on standalone projects like the upcoming Watchmen animated movie. I don't expect there to be yet another DC animated movie universe as that would just be redundant and I don't see that sliding by under the revamping and introduction of James Gunn's DCU. Not to say they won't make any more DC animated films, just stating how it would be more likely they'll be designated as Elseworlds projects akin to the animated movies that have released in the past few years like The Doom That Came to Gotham, Batman Soul of the Dragon, Superman Red Sun, Battle of the Super Sons, those type of films. All I can hope for is for DC animation to get back on track and get back to its roots on why it became so beloved in the first place.